in the wild, his mother would be helping him by preening him, which is their version of grooming. And they'd be going throughout his feathers on the top of the head, scratching him, picking at him, so it feels good. It gets all those old feathers out, and those new feathers have room to break through. On the bottom right there, you can see how it's real fat. That's where the venom glands are actually kept on a Gila monster. And some people would probably watch this and cringe to see my finger this close. Taking your kids to- Oh my goodness! Oh! 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 Wow! No! What is going on, beautiful people? Welcome back to my wildlife. I'm just hanging out with Bagoy, the Eurasian eagle owl, and you can see he's growing like crazy. Look how big he's gotten. He's got all these new feathers. He's grown like a little weed. And not just is he growing out these new feathers on his neck and his chest, but also on the top of his head. So he loves to get scratched right now because it feels really good. He's basically not able to reach those spots. In the wild, his mother would be helping him by preening him, which is their version of grooming, and they'd be going throughout his feathers on the top of the head, scratching him, picking at him, so it feels good, it gets all those old feathers out, and those new feathers have room to break through, and because his mother's not around, I have to help him out, I actually have to give him the scratches and whatnot, and make him feel nice and comfy, get those new feathers popping out, you're such a beautiful boy, you're such a beautiful boy, I love you so much, oh, you big fuzzy chicken, oh, doesn't that feel good? These birds are so incredible. A real bird of prey. The second largest species of owl on the planet, the Eurasian eagle owl. Bagoy Bagoy, as they would say for a scientific name, right? Bagoy. Mm. I love them so much. Bagoy means owl in Hungarian, and my family's Hungarian, so it's really good to have a almost like a mascot for the family, right? Bagoy. Oh, see that new feather? Or that old feather? That's what I'm trying to help them get rid of so we can get that new stuff popping out. It feels nice and good. Oh. And those ear tufts are popping out nicely. See his little ear tufts? They're about like an inch or half an inch. And they're gonna be like two inches long, tall, beautiful ear tufts to intimidate his prey and potential predators. But here, you got nothing to worry about. You're here in heaven. You know what's really cool about this guy? Not just is he the second largest owl on the planet. He actually has almost to a thousand pounds per square inch pressure in his talons, around 750 PSI. That's literally two times greater talon force than the American bald eagle. Think about that. This Eurasian eagle owl, this species as a full grown adult, could potentially take on and kill a bald eagle. But he wouldn't do that because he's a, he's a big fan of America and, he, and he, he's not into that. But isn't that crazy to get an idea in your head of how powerful these animals are? I mean, look, look at the true majestic bald eagle. Look at that. That is an incredible animal. Now look at a full grown Eurasian eagle owl in the hunt. I would not want to see these two birds collide. It would be, you know, I wouldn't want to see that go down, but at the same time, I really would like to see that go down. But it would never happen because the Eurasian eagle owl is found throughout the top of Africa, Europe, and Asia, while the bald eagle is only found in the Americas. So those two birds would never collide in the wild. And here in captivity, they're living peacefully, doing their own thing. Right, Bagoy? You want another head massage? You want to? Oh, so good. Oh. I love you, boy. I love you. All right, beautiful people, we got some fun stuff today. It's gonna be a lizard episode, even though we got Bagoy. Woo! And we're gonna go check out the lace monitors, the Gila monsters, have them run around, get some exercise, and feed them good. Are you ready? Yes! Let's do this. Goodness, look at my sweet, sweet Gila monsters. What is going on, beautiful people? I just took out my Gila monsters. They're ready for a good meal, right? I don't know about you, dude. You look kind of chunky. Maybe you'll just have a few eggs today. We got some quail eggs out of the fridge, getting the room temp. We're gonna be feeding these Gila monsters. Look how big they're getting. They're so beautiful looking. This Gila monster pair is roughly around like 10 years old. So they got some age on them, but they live very, very long. They can live like 40 plus years in captivity, a very long, long life with good food, good water, and a nice setup. Right guys, you doing good? You know, eventually we're gonna get them in a nice, 
desert like setup right now it's just like cypress mulch and whatnot nice and simple for what we got going on but eventually we're going to do a nice arizona themed setup so it's just like the desert where they're native to i have something that you guys love out in the wild this is the natural diet of a heel monster along with pack rats eating all kinds of different rodents in their nest you want that egg you want that egg oh there we go that's my female heel monster She's a bit more cantankerous when it comes to her attitude, but that's perfectly fine. Nothing like some eggs to make her happy. Look at this, this is good, my friend, my big, big friend, come on. And I mean big by personality, not your weight. You are beautiful and perfect, don't worry, come on. Woo, there we go. Is that tasty, huh? Look at those big, fat jaws. At the bottom of those jaws, on the bottom right there, you can see how it's real fat. That's where the venom glands are actually kept on a Gila monster. And some people would probably watch this and cringe to see my finger this close to the mouth of a Gila monster because their venom won't kill you, but it'll certainly leave you in agonizing pain for days, sometimes almost a week. And it's basically like the worst hangover you've ever experienced in your life. Headaches, migraines, it's just terrible. Hot sweats, you're sweating, you feel like you got hot coals going through your body, right? There you go. They're just so funny. You want some more? There you go. So these guys, not too good at breeding in Florida because altitude and humidity. Beaded lizards, you probably have more success with. But these guys aren't extremely threatened in the wild, so I'm not really looking to breed them. They're just my educational ambassadors for the species. To let people know, hey, if you see these lizards out in the wild of Arizona, you don't want to run them over with your car because they move at night, they're nocturnal. And a lot of the times these chubby little tiny leg lizards are hobbling across the road and people don't see them they smash them with their car and they are a protected species so the more lizards that survive the better for their population right right you want some of that shag you want to finish that take a bite come on it is an omelet by jeff jeff ramsey call me jeff ramsey not good and i'm his brother jeff this is raw take this take this it's raw come on take it what are you an idiot sandwich take it i'm kidding you're not an idiot sandwich Pay attention! You're an idiot sandwich! You want a little soup, buddy? Mmm! Yummy! Ooh, look at him, he's just slurping it up with that big old forked tongue. Just like the snakes, they have a forked tongue that's actually connected up with their Jacobson's organ, or it works in fashion with the Jacobson's organ. So those two forks go into two holes at the roof of the mouth. They collect scent particles with those two forks, and they push into the roof of the mouth to actually tell the brain if it's food, a mate, a predator. So the Jacobson's organ is like, special sense that these reptiles have so they can just lick the air and figure out what's going on isn't that cool imagine if you just walked up into a club and went and you're like hmm chicken wings in the back three girls by the bathroom and there's one guy who wants to fight wouldn't that be cool such a goofy little animal i love them but also an animal to respect you never want to walk up to a wild heel monster and try to handle them you see how defensive these guys are they're captive they've been in captivity for a very long time their whole lives and in the wild, if you walk up on one, it's basically like messing with a wild alligator. They'd be spinning at you, they'd be hissing, snapping at you, and if they bite you in the wild, believe me, they're defending their lives. So they're gonna give you a nice concoction of that venom. You should do good boy. He's actually pretty laid back compared to his girlfriend. His girlfriend's very rude. He likes to try to bite me all the time. Him, he's a bit good. You know, usually I'd be in danger being in the spin zone right here, but he's just slurping up the eggs and he's letting me pet him. He's being a good boy. Keep eating the eggs. Don't bite Chandler. Good boy. Look how bony the top of his head is. See how bony and bumpy his whole entire body is? He is just like a Komodo dragon in the fact that he has bones underneath his skin. Or like a crocodile. All that bony armor to protect them. And this is because they live in rough, rocky escarpments that are sharp. And also under cactuses that are prickly. So all this will help them along the side that when they're breeding, they're very rough with each other. And they can actually scar each other up. So to have this armor actually protects them very well while the males are getting real rambunctious trying to mate with the females. So this little female right here won't have too bad of a time when his when her boyfriend tries to beat up on him, give him some love, right? He wants to, oh, it's so tasty. Ew, are you gonna be able to eat that little girl? You're so sweet. Look at her, pink head, so beautiful. And I believe this would be a reticulated Gila monster. And then this would be a northern banded Gila monster. So this would be from northern Arizona, out in the wild, this locality. Now these guys are a little bit laid back when it comes to eating. Real slow, methodical little lizards. But in a second, we're going to be feeding some eggs and we're going to be feeding some mice. 
to the lace monitors and you know they love to run around like, I mean like, look, look at Jack right now. Jack is just waiting. He's looking over here. He's waiting for us to come over with food. She is a psycho. Look how thick it is right there. I would not want her to chomp on my finger. I mean, look at that. That possesses enough venom right there to ruin a whole week. Yikes, I better stop rubbing it. All right guys, I'm gonna take some of these eggs, put some in the back, put some inside the hides, on the other side of the enclosure, just as enrichment so they can actually forage for the eggs like they do in the wild, poking their heads in and out of holes, using that forked tongue. Are there eggs in here? Is there a mouse in here? Is that a sexy Gila monster over there? Nope, that's another Gila monster, that's a boy. It's hard to tell. We all look the same. Oh, he's so tubby. Oh, we're gonna put these guys back. Look at this cute little guy. Oh my goodness, you know, he's venomous. You gotta respect him, you gotta be careful. You wouldn't wanna walk up to one of these guys and just pick him up. You'd be at risk of getting a bite and a federal charge because this is a protected species out in the wilds of Arizona and you do not wanna lay a finger on them. One, safety. Two, you don't wanna be breaking wildlife laws. We have these laws in place to protect these beautiful animals and we wanna see them thrive. But if you're ever driving at night and you see one on the road, don't pick it up. Just pull aside, put on your hazards, make sure the lizard can safely cross the road and just make sure it can live the rest of its life in peace and not get smashed by some mom playing with her phone, taking her kids to- Oh my goodness! Oh! 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 What? Wow! Okay. Are you done? Oh. How about now? Okay. Uh. That's a spicy meatball soup! Uh, wow. He's really healthy. Oh, I love these guys. You're so cute, I could just keep you in. Yeah. I'm gonna get a lot of hate if I kiss one of these Gila monsters. Them being venomous would lead the rest of the reptile community questioning my ability to be responsible. Anyways, let me just put these guys back. I love you. And I love you, my sweet Bodicito little. Yo, I need to put you on a diet. You're so fat. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. So cute. All right, contenders. Get ready to come up below. Who's going to win the speed race of the year? Don't whip me. That's rude. Who's going to win the speed race of the year? We have on my left. Jack, the lace monitor morph called the Bell's Phase, naturally occurring in Eastern Australia. And then on my right, we have the normal locality colored lace monitor, Lacey! Weighing up to God knows how many grams. Let's see what she wants. Do you want a little dead chicken? Let's see how fast she's willing to move for this chicken. Come on, come on, come my way, come on. Let's see that beautiful neck. And execution, look at that beast of a girl. As she continues to swallow down that small bird, we prepare another food item for our other contender, Jack, who likes to stay jet. Let's see those forearms, Jack, come on, squat for us, give us a tripod position. Yes, just like your wild cousin, the Panoptes, the Argus Monitor, or Floods Plane Koina would do. Look at this, wow. You just gotta love these lizards, guys. Jack and Lacey, the Bell's Phase and Normal Lace Monitor, all along up and down the coast. You can find these guys on Eastern Australia. You want that? Ooh! And these guys are raptors. It's crazy to think they're just around a year and a half, two years old, and these guys have the capability to get six and a half feet long. That is literally like a giant water monitor. But imagine a big water monitor that's just black and white. I mean, look at this guy. He is so beautiful. Let me stop feeding the mice because we need to feed those to some other snakes. And we're going to get out the next round. This is the egg round to see who is more athletic at collecting eggs. Jack is not participating today. Not expected from one of our best athletes. Jack, there you go, big boy. Eat the egg. Eat the egg, silly. That's delicious. These guys are true egg lovers. I mean, if any lizard on the planet has known to love eggs, it's monitor lizards. The whole Guana family, whether they're in Africa, Asia, or Australia, these guys are egg bandits, the true egg hunting experts. Whether it's bird eggs, lizard eggs, gecko eggs, other lizard eggs, croc eggs, they will go through that nest and steal those eggs. What are you doing, Lacey? You want a little help? He is such a beast. I mean, look at him, covered in armor beautiful banding up and down the body and sooner or later we're gonna have them in their own big walking enclosures we're gonna get a boyfriend for Lacey and a girlfriend for Jack Ooh, you like those eggs you like those look at him he's getting so big little 
Oh, scratching his back. He's like a cat. He raises his back up. Look at that. I love him so much. Reminds me of Ziggy the Crocodile when I'd scratch her on the back. Look at that. These are such cool lizards. How can you not love lace monsters? I mean, look at the colorations. Look at their Komodo dragon-like build. And supposedly, out of all the monitor lizards, the lace monitor is the most closely related to the Komodo dragon. Because the Komodo dragon, in fact, is a type of monitor lizard. Alright, my beautiful, lovely people. I thank you for joining me on another wildlife. Make sure you guys check out Croc Fest. It's coming up this week, actually. We're going to be doing Croc Fest. So, June 26th, Lowry Park, Tampa Zoo. You're going to be able to help support crocodile conservation. If you come out, buy a ticket, have some drinks, hang out, meet and greet with myself, Tyler Nolan, Savannah Bowen, all these great people. We're all going to be hanging out at the Tampa Zoo this Saturday, 12 to 9 at night. It's going to be a great time. Literally, partying in a zoo. What, what more do you ask for? Really? And don't forget, to get your Get Jack merchandise. So if you want to go to the gym and meet all the ladies and show them what you got, make sure you wear your Get Jack merchandise. You don't know what it looks like? I'll show you one more time. Whoa, 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 whoa. Look at that. Ooh, look at that, Jack. You're famous. You're on a t-shirt. Oh, you don't care because you're a lizard? True. All right, beautiful people. I'll see you on the next one. Stay beautiful. Stay safe. Stay passionate about what you love. Always pursue your dreams and what makes you happy. I'll see you on the next one. Don't forget to check us on Patreon for exclusive content. I'll see you at Croc Fest. <laughs>